Hello, this is Catherine. This is Taking Tea with Catherine. This is Darjeeling Side. Darjeeling Side. I don't know how to pronounce this from Harney and Sons, which in my most recent video I tried for the first time and this is just being filmed a few minutes later. Um, so I'm still going with my cup. It's a really nice uh, Darjeeling tea with some kind of citrusy flavors. So yeah, it's exactly how uh, it's described. So um, let's get started with my... Uh, the subject on hand. Yeah, I, was, I thought about com combining these two videos, but then I thought, oh no, I'm going to go on too long about this and I'm trying to keep my videos a little bit shorter, if possible. <laughs> so at least the tea haul will be short. I don't know about this one because I got a lot of books to talk about. So I have a little bit of a problem, which is that I take out too many library books when I already own, as you probably know from watching my hauls, from watching anything that I do, far too many books, if that is possible. And... So it doesn't make sense, but I do have a few bits of reasoning behind it. Number one is that I can't really, as I saw after after my struggles with, um, after uh, the libraries were closed and everything was, you know, closed up, I realized, and, you know, I still have issues with my e-reader apps or whatever. So when I wanted so badly to read anything that had just come out, I would have to buy it. And uh, there are still, that still happens sometimes because even now that the library is open, there's still some books that are just not available in the library. And I know they say you can request things, but I don't know. Heck, I still haven't done that. I always figure if it's not there at that particular library in New York, will it ever be there? I don't know. Is that arrogant? Maybe. But what happened was, um, yeah, so I the, the library reopened in about, I don't know if it was July or August, but it came, it was available for me to go to in August, which is when I started putting books on hold and then they started coming and I put more books on hold and they started coming and, then, oh, and they, they have piled up to a point where I'm a little out of control. Uh, like I said, I don't feel bad because sometimes these, uh, these books can be pricey, especially nonfiction. They can be, um, oh my goodness, like $30 for a book or more. And much as I want to support new authors, I can't do that to every book that I want to read. I will go completely broke. This is why I, I buy so many books that are really not not expensive because, you know, <laughs> yeah, I do like owning books. But anyway, but man, uh, so yeah, I, I end up, you know, saying, okay, when I can, I will t check books at the library. And it's, and it's not just not just nonfiction books, also any any new contemporary books that come out in any genre, fiction, I really have trouble just buying it every single time new because it's a gamble. If you buy a book for $25 and it's a novel that is pretty good, but not that good, now you own a book that is just okay and it's like, it, it just it just feels a bit wasteful for someone who reads a lot, you know? Or for anybody, really. And even the other thing that I like to read, which is, um, you know, mysteries, cozy mysteries, whatever. And, you know, oh, they're not that expensive. They usually come out in paperback and they're about, you know, maybe like seven, eight dollars. I'm like, that adds up because they usually come in series. That's one of the few types of series that I read, if, if you can call it series. I think they kind of are. And so if I were to read every single book by purchasing them, get again, so to me, it's like, oh yeah, I'm saving money this way, which is true. But then I end up taking out so many, biting off more than I could chew, and then I can't read all the book. So yes, I do have issues. Um, and my other thing is that some of the books, I, they won't let me renew. They don't automatically renew them in this, in this library, but they will not fine books for being um, unrenewable. Like if, if someone else requested them or... They, you've renewed them too many times, whatever, they're overdue. No fines because of, because of COVID. I guess they figured not everyone can make it to the library all the time. So they changed the, the, the date um, many times. Now it's at the end of um, December. I think after January, if you don't return these books, they're going to start fining. Now they say that, and there's this part of me that says, well, they keep putting it off. And, you know, the way things are going with all the spikes and whatnot and all the things they say about the holidays, whatever, bringing in, you know, more growth in COVID, who knows? I don't want to get into that too much, but it is possible that they'll extend it another month or so. But I don't want to um, necessarily 
you know, take that risk and say, oh yeah, yeah, I don't have to worry about it. Not, not only that, but I don't want to wish that things are extended because people are getting sick. That sounds just horrible. So the thing is, I have decided that these books probably should be finished and or returned by the end of December. But I'm going to show you all of these and some of them I've had checked out for quite some time. So I'm going to show you all the books I have. Some of them are actually, one of them have actually finished already. So that's not a big problem. I just have to, I'm just holding on to it for now. But, um, and I'll show you where I'm at with them. And if you see any that I absolutely have to read, please let me know. Or if you see any ones that are absolutely disappointing, let me know as well so I can return them, you know? Okay. So the first one I have, I'm almost done with, and I've really enjoyed it. It's, um, Becoming Duchess Goldblatt, which is a memoir. I had not heard of... This is a, um, a Twitter, was it a page, a Twitter account? I don't know what you call it. Um, where someone has been using this name, Duchess Goldblatt, and this picture, which is from an old painting from the 1600s, and uh, just saying all kinds of things and then dispensing advice and people just came to love Duchess Goldblatt. And I hadn't heard of her until I heard of this book, but this is uh, written by the writer of these tweets and it is um this person sounds like a woman because they talk about being she talks about being a mother but um but all it says is anonymous the real life person in whose mind duchess goldblatt lives and flourishes has gathered all available truth and beauty for these pages there's nothing else to give so it's basically based on the person behind duchess goldblatt i'm assuming this is all true you know um so yeah, it's a bit more, but it, I, I find it good so far. So I'll talk about it again after I finish it, which I will soon. And here's another one of my, why do I still have this out? You know, for shame, for shame, because I took this out right before um, lockdown began in March. And I don't know why I've not actually picked this up. And I feel bad about returning it because I do want to read it. But then I'm like, am I really going to read it? And that is Alexander McCall Smith's The Peppermint Tea Chronicles. It's the next one in the 44 Scotland Street novels, which I like. And I, when I went to Scotland in 2017, I um, got to see the neighborhood where this was based on and it was gorgeous. Probably couldn't afford to live there myself, but it was, but I could see where the characters would get their ways from, I suppose. <sighs> yes, I want to go back to Scotland. But anyway, um, I just haven't gotten to it yet and I probably should just return it. But uh, I don't know. I've, I've had it in a couple of Friday reads, like I was going to pick it up that weekend and I never did shame on me this is another book that i've had well not too long actually i made some progress in it and i like it and i've mentioned it a couple times already so rebel bookseller it's basically about how to um how to run a indie book shop which is not as easy as one would hope and here's a book that i'm kind of like i should just return this because it's been overdue even though i haven't had any fines since october since someone wanted it, requested it, and I wanted to renew it, but it's not a big book, so I kind of just want to hold on to it and read it. It's got, let me see. Um, mm -hmm. Sorry, a little pause there. 165 pages. That's not a lot. I could probably just blow right through this, and I just have it. It's um, World of Wonders in Praise of Fireflies, Whale Sharks, and Other Astonishments by Amy oh, Nezuku Matafil. Maybe. Um, and I just, it sounds, it sounds lovely from when I started. I read, read a few pages. I really liked it. So I want to hold on to it, but I, I should really keep going. Anyway, this book is a book that I started at the end of October, but it is fiction. So I kind of devoted myself this month to nonfiction. So I thought, okay, I, I read up to just over 40 pages. Maybe I'll read it in December, but it's one of the sadder, um, this is one of the six Tudor Queen series, Catherine Howard, The Scandalous Queen by Alison Weir. I read um, a couple of them in this series. I don't think I read the first two, however, so I could probably keep going in that. But this is probably the saddest one because she had such a messed up upbringing and then she ended up getting executed for doing something that she probably did, but she probably didn't know better. So we'll see how far I get in this. I never get tired of the Tudor Queens. I never get tired of them. Or Tudor anything, really. Now this one I really, really, really should return. I have had this out over a year. And 
I can't renew it anymore, obviously. They just don't mind. They just don't do anything about it. But I made really big progress over halfway through. And it is a good book. I just somehow put it down and never picked it back up. And that is The Good Neighbor, The Life and Works of Fred Rogers. I am a big fan of Mr. Rogers. I very much, oh, by Maxwell King. I grew up with Mr. Rogers and absolutely loved him. I was very sad when he died. You know, big, big influence on my childhood. So I wanted to read everything about him, but somehow I just, you know, had other books that I was reading. Oh, and he fell. Anyway, so maybe I'll return that or maybe I'll just pick it up and just breeze through it. Who knows? So the next book is a book that I took out. It was the first one I took out, one of the first ones I took out after returning to the library. I'm being so happy about that. I read the second book in this. Um, it's not a series yet, but because um, there's only two books, but and I liked it. So I want to read this one. I, I, I'm really behind in my mystery reading right now. So I really want to read this, but I just haven't. I just haven't. And it's called The Word is Murder by Anthony Horowitz. So Anthony Horowitz puts himself in as a character following around this detective who's kind of a difficult person. Saw the crimes. I still liked it. Here's a book that I enjoy. Oh my goodness, it's so heavy. It is so heavy. <laughs> I, I like I like this uh, writer, artist, whatever you want to call it. Um, I don't know why I haven't gotten too far in it. It's just, it, it's mostly drawings, but I just haven't. Um, and this came out recently. It's the return of somebody who's who was gone for a while, which is Ali Brosh, Solutions and Other Problems. And she wrote Hyperbole and a Half, which I really liked. It was a blog and then the book. And um, yeah, I just don't, I just don't want to give up on it, you know. And now here's a book that I finished. I just, I'm just holding it on, holding on to it now because I just want to make some more notes on it and then um, discuss it. But I'll probably return it early in December. Really love this book. The Romantic Outlaws, uh, The Extraordinary Lives of Mary Wollstonecraft and Her Daughter Mary Shelley by Charlotte Gordon. Totally recommend if you're into this. And if you're not, I kind of recommend it too. Okay, we're down to books. Well, no, let me just get this one over with because I had this out a little bit longer and I like it, but I just hit a chapter I didn't like so much. And that always slows me down. This is The Revenge of Analog, Real Things and Why They Matter by David Sachs. I got up to the chapter about, um, it's all these things that are kind of considered um, outdated, you know, not relevant anymore. There's another word. Obsolete. <laughs> you know, just because of technology. And yet some of these things made a comeback. I don't know about now, but when it was written a couple years ago, it was definitely some of these things are just trendy in certain ways. Things like vinyl records, etc. I got up to the chapter, um, I got up to a chapter about, um, Polaroids. I'm sorry, I keep pausing today. Polaroids. And, uh, you know, film, film cameras and stuff like that. And I don't know why it just kind of bored me a little bit, which is weird because I really like taking pictures. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so maybe I'll, maybe I'll continue with that. Here's a book that I had on hold for a long time. It took forever to arrive and it just didn't. It is beat up. Someone must have really loved this book. But, um, that is The Book Woman of Troublesome Creek by, it's like Kim Michelle Richardson. So... You know, I hate when, when there's like a sticker here, because like, what if it's a Kim <laughs> or Ekim? But I think it's Kim, right? Let me just, let, let's look it up. Um, see, uh, Kim Michelle Richardson. And I don't know much about this, except that it was, um, it's about like a public library service that they used to, you know, take things around. Um, okay. Um, traveling librarians. And this is uh, a girl who is... This is something that really happened in history, which I'd like to look into it, but this is around the post, um, post-depression era or slightly post-depression era. Um, there were these people in, uh, Kentucky, the United States who were blue skinned and I don't know how that happened. So I want to read a little more about this. And also it's book related, you know, that's my thing. Okay. This just sounds up my alley and I only just started it but I like the sound of it. Around the World in 80 Trains, a 45,000 mile adventure by Monisha Rajesh. So she goes, she travels in trains and writes about it and all over the place. So um, where does she go? She goes, um, takes from London St. Pancras, which I've been to, to the vast expanses of Russia and Mongolia, North Korea, Canada, Kazakhstan, and beyond. 
So, wow. I like train travel. If I could afford the time and the resources, not this year, obviously, but I would totally love to travel in slight luxury, of course, because, you know, bathrooms and all that. I would love to travel by train all over the place, but I'm lacking in time and resources. Anyway, so these two books I just got out from the library the other day. This is a second in a book that, in a, I guess probably series, that I really liked. It's a, it's, I think it's middle grade or whatever you want to call it. Um, Pages and Co. The Lost Fairy Tales by Anna James. I read the first Pages and Co., which is the book Wanderers. It was fantastic. It's like being able to go go inside of books. So this one is the second one. Tilly and her best friend Oscar are book wanderers, a remarkable group of people who, using the magical power of books, can travel inside any story they choose. But on a wintry visit to Paris, the friends wander inside a book of fairy tales to find that peculiar things are happening. Characters are getting lost, stories are all mixed up, and mysterious plot holes are opening without warning. So that could be really fun. It reminds me, again, I've said this before, it reminds me of Jasper Ford's books, which are, I guess, the adult versions of these. Um, and uh, mostly his Thursday Next books, which is basically um, someone who could read herself into books and do all kinds of things. But also um, the her, his Nursery Crimes, which was basically nursery rhyme characters and fairy tale characters that, um, that exist in real life somehow. Okay, so last but not least, I've been waiting for this one for a while. And uh, the cover is different than I remember, but I'm going to try to read it anyway. Because I'm not going to get that disappointed. This one has been making its rounds all over the place. So you might recognize this. Hamnet, a novel of the play by Maggie O'Farrell. So Hamnet was Shakespeare's son. I mean, a novel of the plague is a little bit depressing. You know, who would want to read about something during a plague? <laughs> but anyway, um, The Black Death, though. It's a little bit different. So I think this could be really good because I like reading about Shakespeare's time anyway hopefully. And I've heard nothing about this, nothing but good things about this. So anyway, those are all the books I have, I think, I hope, out from the library. And let me know if any of these, I've said this before, but let me know if any of these are absolute, these are the first ones. Don't, don't let the, you know, year end without reading these. Or let me know if any of these have been absolute disappointments to you. If you like talking about library books, if you like talking about book hauls, if you like talking about tea, if you like talking about anything bookish pretty much. Please subscribe and please like this uh, video if you like this video. <laughs> so this has been Catherine at Taking Tea with Catherine. Have a lovely tea and library book filled day. Bye.